Senate will come to order. I ask all present to please rise and join with me as we recite the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Today's invocation will be offered by the Reverend Herbert Miller, pastor of Park Slope United Methodist Church in Brooklyn. Reverend Miller. Let us take a moment to silently center ourselves or to offer our own meditations or to join me in prayer. O Holy One, source of all that is, we come ready to do the holy work, yes, the holy work, of ordering this society and the lives of your people entrusted to our care in this state of New York in which you've placed us. We're thankful for the opportunity to work with our colleagues surrounding us in a state full of wonder and beauty, towering buildings, soaring mountains, seashores, lakeshores, rivers, and swamps. Some of us come alert, energetic, and hopeful, others with varying degrees of fatigue, cynicism, or anxiety. But all of us come aware that we work, deliberate, and decide not to get our own way or to exert our own will, or even necessarily the wills of our constituents but on behalf of the common good. We come here with enough self-awareness to know that to a large extent, those of us gathered here are a privileged people. We are a gathering of the suits, the men and the women with good education and the best connections, people of power who know how to have our voices heard. And so we come bearing a special responsibility and require thus your special guidance. We need a special measure of self-awareness and a spirit of generosity and good-heartedness so that we can check our power and represent well those who are absent from this gathering, the poor, the elderly, the unemployed and underemployed, minorities under threat, prisoners who live at the edge of their constitutional rights, and the many who do not participate in our privilege. It's easy to forget that there are those around us who live lives of deficit, cut off from power, and denied access to the gains we enjoy. And so, O oh God, help us to, wield, to yield our wills to yours. Help us to bring order amidst our disorder. Help us to see the larger picture, to dream greater dreams, to imagine a brighter future because we cannot realize what we cannot imagine. Help us to discern priorities divested from our perch of privilege and to look beyond our own perceived sense of scarcity to the abundance of resources entrusted to us. Oh God, help us to govern and to legislate for the sake of the lives of others until all people in this state can live lives of opportunity, lives healthy and whole. Amen. A reading of the journal. Consented Monday, May 9th, to send him up pursuant to adjournment. The journal of Sunday, May 8th, was read and approved. A motion, Senate adjourned. Without objection, the journal will stand approved as read. Presentation of petitions, messages from the Assembly, messages from the Governor, reports of standing committees, reports of select committees, communications and re reports from state officers, motions and resolutions. Senator DeFrancisco. On page 27, I offer the following amendments to the calendar 599, Senate print 6497 by Senator Marchione, and ask that said bill retain its place on the third reading calendar. Amendments are received. The bill shall retain its place on third reading. Also on page 27, I offer the following amendments to the calendar 604, Senate print 4778 by Senator Venditto, and ask that said bill retain its place on the three, third reading calendar. Amendments are received. Bill shall retain its place on third reading. On tw page 24, I offer the following amendments to calendar 528, Senate print 6270 by Senator Vendetto, and ask that said bill retain its place on third reading calendar. The amendments are received. The bill shall retain its place on third reading. On page number 25, I offer the following amendments to calendar 527, Senate print 4879B by Senator Martins and ask that said bill retain its place on the third reading calendar. Amendments are received. The bill shall retain its place on third reading. On page 32, I offer the following amendments to calendar 653, Senate print 5238 by Senator Murphy, and ask that said bill retain its place on the third reading calendar. Amendments are received. The bill shall retain its place on third reading. 
I move that the following bill by Senator Boyle be discharged from its com respective committee and be recommitted with instructions to strike the enacting clause. This bill, Senate Bill Number 5162. It is so ordered. Thank you, Mr. President. Can we now adopt the resolution calendar with the exception of resolutions 5352 and 5406? All in favor of adopting the resolution calendar with the exception of resolutions 5332 and 5406 indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed? The resolution calendar is adopted with the exceptions noted. Senator DeFrancisco. Can we now take up resolution 5406 by Senator Flanagan? Read it in its entirety and call on Senator Flanagan uh, to speak, uh, followed by Senator Klein and then uh, Senator uh, Stewart Cousins and also Senator Hassel Thompson. I'd ask for some order in the House as the Secretary reads. Secretary Secretary will resolution read. number 5406 by Senators Flanagan, Klein, and Stewart Cousins, congratulating the 2016 New York State Senate Women of Distinction. Whereas, it is the sense of this legislative body to acknowledge and celebrate women of distinction who significantly add inspiration and encouragement to the people of this great empire state. And whereas, the New York State Senate Women of Distinction Program was created in 1998 as part of our state's celebration of Women's History Month to honor exemplary women from across New York State whose singular professional or personal achievements, commitment to excellence, and accomplishments merit special recognition. Honorees are selected from nominations submitted from across the state. And whereas, women of every economic, ethnic, and religious background have made significant contributions that are reflected across all aspects of society. And whereas, it is a custom of this legislative body to pay tribute to individuals of remarkable character who have shown initiative and commitment in constantly pursuing higher goals for themselves, as well as acting as role models to all women in their community. And whereas, on behalf of the New York State Senate, I take this opportunity to congratulate Jill Alford Hammett, Sherlita Amler, MD, Yvonne P. Armstrong, Cora D. Austin, Vicki Barbero, Sherilyn Brannon, Sister Margaret Carney, Elizabeth Shell Carr, Claudia Coger, Ruth Johnson Colvin, Sister Mary Doris, Eva M. Doyle, Rosemary Durso, Audrey Sparks Fusa, Gail Goodson, Deborah M. Hayes, Karen A. Hagen, Cindy Doreen Hollywood, Ellen Holmes, Mary Apalucci, Ellen R. Mbimbo, Doreen Isley, Mary Frances Jeffrey, Candace S. Johnson, Ph.D., Nicole Johnson, Shamila K. Joseph, Reverend Ann Cansfield, Virginia N. Krebs, Tomasini Laidley Brown, Anne Marie Lanzi, Linda M. Lemura, Ph.D., April Leong, Blanca P. Lopez, Heidi McPherson, Ph.D., Janet McEnany, Jill Esterbrook Morris, Leslie C. Myers, Donna Christina Oliverio, Megan Ortega, Marianne Pfeiffer, Trudy Pogue, Pia J. Raymond, Inez Rodriguez, Bonnie Ross, Florence Santini, Evita Scaturo, Anita C. Fred Brown, Marty Sheikin, Ph.D., Tatina Shmolovich, Chitra Singh, Honorable Deborah A. Slezak, Dawn R. Smith, Marjorie J. Smith, Carmen Tapia, Udelica Tapia, Wendy Tepfer, Barbara Toborg, and Torcevia, Constance A. Wiley, as 2016 New York State Senate Women of Distinction to be celebrated on Tuesday, May 10th, 2016 at the annual Women of Distinction Awards ceremony in the well of the Legislative Office Building. And whereas women have become part of New York's lasting heritage by fighting against stereotypes, prejudice, and seemingly insurmountable obstacles. And whereas from the women's suffrage movement just over 150 years ago to the present day, women have played and continue to play a crucial role in adding strength, understanding, and inspiration to the diversity and quality of life of the people of the state of New York. And whereas New York State has been and continues to be the home of many distinguished women who have made their mark in history as pioneers in their field, 
therefore laying the foundation for women after them to succeed. And whereas this legislative body recognizes that New York State is the home to countless women who are strong and call for threads vital to the fabric of our rich heritage, who have contributed and continue to add to the advancement of our culture through their traditional and non-traditional roles in society. And whereas it is the sense of this legislative body that those who enhance the well-being and vitality of their community and have shown a long and sustained commitment to excellence certainly have earned the recognition and applause of all citizens of this great empire state. Now, therefore, be a result that this legislative body pause its deliberations to congratulate the 2016 New York State Senate Women of Distinction and be a further resolve that copies of this resolution suitably engrossed be transmitted to the aforementioned Women of Distinction. Senator Flanagan. Thank you, Mr. President. I know we have uh, Senator Stuart Cousins and Senator Klein will be speaking also. And we have a wonderful ceremony that's going to take place honoring that all the women that are here today. I think this is a fantastic time-honored tradition in the Senate. It is nonpartisan or bipartisan, to say the least. And I have two favorite things about this day. First is that I, like everybody else, have the opportunity to pick out and recognize a woman of distinction from the district that I'm fortunate enough to represent. And really, probably the funnest part of this, funnest part of this whole day is to hear about women all across the state of New York from different walks of life who have accomplishments. And I know, for example, the lady that I chose this year, her name is Ellen Holmes. She was shocked to be picked. She was happy to be picked. She felt that she was undeserving to be picked. And those were all the reasons that I picked her, because she didn't think that she was worthy of consideration. And I'm sure many of my colleagues feel that same way. We can pick out somebody who's got a lot of public accolades and things of that nature, but I picked out a lady that I met as a constituent, picked out a lady that, frankly, I met as a, when I was campaigning at her house. And she ended up becoming friendly with us, with us, volunteering. She's turned out to be a fantastic mom, great community person. And what I'm saying is no different than everybody else. I don't want to steal Senator DeFrancisco's thunder, but he has a very unique individual that he's honoring today. So this is not only appropriate, it's fitting, and I am very grateful that we have the opportunity to recognize women all across the state of New York for their small and big and legendary accomplishments. Mr. President, thank you. Thank you, Senator Flanagan. Senator Klein. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, it is certainly appropriate uh, that year after year we celebrate uh, women of distinction across our great state because I think everyone knows uh, the illustrious <laughs> history of women uh, as trailblazers, pioneers, and most important, beacons of light uh, to the lives of millions of Americans, uh, from Susan B. Anthony to Eleanor Roosevelt, uh, Lucille Ball to Harriet Tubman. Uh, we celebrate uh, the women of yesteryear, uh, but certainly recognize uh, the great women of distinction in the present. Uh, I think uh, some women in their lives uh, that had a major impact uh, on their own life. Uh, and certainly uh, today, uh, I'm very proud to uh, recognize uh, my woman of distinction, uh, Rosemary Durso, uh, who's up in the gallery. Uh, she's someone who I've had the privilege of knowing uh, for a very, very long time. She's uh, always been active in the community, uh, active on behalf of uh, the community she loves so much. And uh, presently, and certainly since 1998, uh, she served as director of the Regional Aid Interim Needs Center, uh, known as RAIN. Uh, RAIN is the most prominent uh, senior services organization in the Bronx. Uh, they run now probably every senior center that exists in the Bronx, uh, senior housing, uh, the Meals on Wheels program uh, that exists in the Bronx, and uh, Rosemary runs uh, the Boston Road uh, Rain Senior Center, which is in my district, which is, uh, I think, one of the nicest Rain centers. Uh, and she really has dedicated her life, uh, dedicated her life to uh, making sure that our senior citizens uh, can live out their golden years in comfort and dignity. Uh, and as a way of, I guess, Bronx political trivia, uh, her late husband, uh, who is a very dear friend of mine, Mike Durso, uh, once ran uh, for the Senate seat that I now represent. Uh, he was a community banker, uh, head of the Bronx Chamber of Commerce, uh, again, someone that was so active uh, in the community in the Bronx. Uh, and now, Rosemary's granddaughter, Michelle, uh, works in my Senate office, in my district office. So there's certainly uh, a tradition of community service and public service uh, and she is somebody that certainly uh, can be considered under any definition 
uh, a woman of distinction. Thank you, Rosemary, and thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Klein. Senator Hassel Thompson. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise and thank um, my leader of the Democratic Conference, Andrea Stewart Cousins, for asking me to stand in her stead today to um, congratulate and to say how pleasurable it is for us today to be honoring such women across the state. Each of the men who have spoken have already taken my thunder in terms of the historical perspective. But certainly, um, in the present, uh, we have an extraordinary group of women that we are honoring today, some of which, as I looked at the list, were people that I know from places in the state. And um, even though they're not all my honorees, I feel that the relationship that I have shared with them over the years has helped me to become the person that I am. And so I think that while I am so pleased to be able to honor my own personal honoree, Doreen Isley, who, kicking and screaming, um, did not want the honor. She said that I love it, I love the idea of it, but I really don't like the spotlight. And, and I, like um, Senator Flanagan, said that that's the reason she should be honored, because there are a lot of people who work from behind the scenes and who make our lives better just because they live. And she is one of those women, and I'm very honored to know her and certain to honor her along with the other women today. So thank you, Mr. President, for the opportunity to welcome all of the women who are being honored today and certainly to my honoree. Thank you, Senator Hassel Thompson. The question is on the resolution. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? The resolution is adopted. Senator DeFrancisco. So I would just uh, recommend to everybody who's in the audience uh, to uh, come to the ceremony at 5.30. It's in, in one of the hearing rooms in the LOB. And uh, all of us want to speak about our woman of distinction. But in order to get there on time, we just ask the leaders to speak today. So I'd invite everyone to this wonderful ceremony. Uh, would you please now recognize Senator uh, Hassel Thompson uh, to recognize a group? Senator Hassel Thompson. Thank you again, Mr. President. Um, I am pleased to be able to welcome a group of students and their chaperones who have come annually. This is their eighth year. Uh, they come from Ohio, from the state of Ohio, and they're from Crenshaw Middle School in Canton, Ohio, and Bushell Community Learning Center in Akron, Ohio. Uh, they are here with their chaperones and the organizer, Mr. Mark Favors, um, I need my glasses, to Mr. Edwards, Mrs. Albach, Mr. Bush, Mr. Edwards, Ms. Rosser, Ms. Ritter, Mr. Powers, and Mr. Marcel. These students um, have come to learn about government, and they, like the students that have preceded them the prior seven years, I had a very rousing and engaged conversation today, and I feel that they learned a great deal, and they, are, they make us very proud because they really do care about their government. So I would appreciate if we would just give them um, a New York welcome. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Hansel Thompson. We welcome the uh, youngsters. Please rise. Welcome you to the House. Welcome you to the House and hope you enjoy your visit. Senator DeFrancisco. Um, yeah. You want to be recognized on this resolution? Okay. No, we, we're not doing those. You weren't here. No. We'll explain to them what we did. Um, first of all, I've neglected to open the uh, Women of Distinction resolution up uh, for co sponsorship, and uh, if someone does not want to do co-sponsor it, they should notify the desk. So, uh, resolution 5406 is open for co-sponsorship. Should you choose not to be a co-sponsor, please notify the desks. Senator DeFrancisco. Okay, can we now take a previously adopted resolution uh, 5191 by Senator Little, read the title only, and recognize Senator uh, Little. Secretary will read. Legislative resolution number 5191 by Senator Little, memorializing Governor Andrew M. Cuomo to proclaim May 8th to May 15, 2016, as Fibromyalgia Awareness Week in the state of New York. Senator Little. 
Thank you, Mr. President, and um, thank you for having this resolution here today. Um, fibromyalgia is an illness that affects over 10 million people in the United States. And while it is predominantly affecting women, there are men and children who contract fibromyalgia. The biggest problem that they have is that it's very difficult to get a diagnosis of fibromyalgia. It can take up to five years, mainly because there isn't enough medical education being done to prepare people to look for fibromyalgia. <clears throat> Some of its symptoms are extreme fatigue, muscle pain, anxiety, and depression. Having fibromyalgia can be a big cost, not just physically but economically, to people in that their inability to work and the impact that it has on their family and those around them. The Fibromyalgia Task Force <clears throat> has come out with a report of which they have already distributed 5,000 copies and just had 2,000 more copies printed. The purpose of their report is to raise awareness, advocacy, and action to try to find a cure, a treatment first, and then a cure for fibromyalgia. Their goals are to establish a fibromyalgia center and to have legislation that will make fibromyalgia a part of the medical education for our doctors and health professionals. The task force is represented here today but by Dr. Sue Shippey, the chair, Mr. Ira Mendelson III, an attorney, Mrs. Agnes Welch, fibromyalgia support group founder, Mr. Ron Monson, physician assistant, Mr. Joe Hazen, health coach, and Ms. Kelly Nicholas, a massage therapist. Very important because in anything, and anyone with fibromyalgia, the treatment is having a team of health professionals who work together to help that person uh, endure their illness and hopefully be able to live with it. So I thank you very much for having this um, resolution here today, and I appreciate uh, support of the chamber. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Little. As indicated, the resolution was adopted on May 4th of this year. Senator DeFrancisco, without objection, Senator Litter has requested the resolution to be open for co-sponsorship. I was just going to suggest that. <laughs> if you choose not to be a co-sponsor, please notify the desk. Senator DeFrancisco. Thank you. Now can we take up previously adopted resolution 5233 by Senator Serino, read in its entirety and call on Senator Serino uh, to speak. The Secretary will read. Yes. Legislative resolution number 5233 by Senator Serino. Memorializing Governor Andrew M. Cuomo to proclaim May 10, 2016 as Senior Citizens Day in the State of New York. Whereas, it is the sense of this legislative body to memorialize Governor Andrew M. Cuomo to proclaim May 10, 2016 as Senior Citizens Day in the State of New York in conjunction with the observance of May being declared as National Older Americans Month. And whereas, the more than 3 million residents of New York State, 60 years of age and older, bring a wealth of experience and knowledge to the increasingly active roles they play in today's society. Their past contributions and future participation are a vital part of and a valuable asset to the fabric community life and activity. And whereas these senior citizens have contributed to the state by building and helping preserve the customs, traditions, and ideals of many ethnic groups that make up the mosaic of New York State. And whereas the wisdom and experience of senior citizens constantly enrich the lives of the young people of our state. Have some order in the House, please. Secretary will continue. And whereas the wisdom and experience of senior citizens constantly enrich the lives of the young people of our state through a strong tradition of volunteerism. And whereas since 1962, the month of May has been declared by presidential proclamation, Older Americans Month, in order to in order for communities around the nation to set time aside to celebrate and reflect on the unique role older Americans play in the fabric of our society. And whereas the legislative and executive branches of New York State government have as a primary goal the improvement of quality of life of older New Yorkers and the assurance of their continued dignity. And whereas it is the intent of this legislative body to recognize and celebrate 
the legacy of New York's senior citizens who have, who have experienced tumultuous changes in the 20th century, including the dawn of the nuclear age, the rise of the computer, and the proliferation of automobiles, television, technology, and so many other innovations of the American spirit and who now represent a vast and willing source of knowledge available to our great state of New York. Now, therefore, be it resolved that this legislative body pause in its deliberations to memorialize Governor Andrew M. Cuomo to, pro to proclaim May 10, 2016, as Senior Citizens Day in the state of New York, and be it further resolved that this legislative body pause further to urge the residents of New York State to honor all our senior citizens who are a cornerstone of strength of our nation and who, whom a debt of gratitude is owed, and be a further resolved that a copy of this resolution suitably engrossed be transmitted to the Honorable Andrew M. Cuomo, Governor of the State of New York. Senator Serino. Thank you, Mr. President. Our seniors have spent their lives building the state that we know and love, and today I am thrilled to be able to put the spotlight on them by recognizing May 10th as Senior Citizen Day here in New York. Earlier today, I had the pleasure of joining seniors from just about all of our counties at a luncheon at the event center, seniors who have dedicated their lives to service and volunteerism. Many of the seniors that were recognized today are here in the gallery with us now, and let me tell you, I am in absolute awe of their accomplishments. From my district, we have here with us today George D'Alessandro who at age 87 instructs a fitness class at a local friendship center. And just in case any was anyone was thinking about skipping the gym tonight, think again. And I especially want to acknowledge Mr. R. Murray Suggett, who, while he couldn't make the trip here today, has been named Senior of the Year by all of us here in the Senate for his unwavering dedication to the Fishkill Food Pantry. For over 20 years, and with little fanfare, Mr. Saget has overseen the growth of a food pantry that started in a basement and has evolved into an operation of 40 staff members who work to ensure that those in need have a place that they can count on to turn to. I am not only incredibly inspired by all of our seniors here today, I am absolutely humbled. On behalf of the New York State Senate and as Chair of the Aging Committee, I thank each and every one of you for your commitment to making our communities and our state better each and every day. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Serino. The question is on the resolution. All in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed? The resolution is adopted. Senator DeFrancisco. Yes, this uh, too should be open for co-sponsorship. The resolution is open for co-sponsorship. Should you choose not to be a co-sponsor, please notify the desk. Senator DeFrancisco. Yes, uh, can we now take up resolution 5352 by Senator Kennedy, title only, and then call on Senator Kennedy, please. The Secretary will read. Legislative resolution number 5352 by Senator Kennedy, commemorating the 50th anniversary of Miss Barber's School of Dance in Buffalo, New York. Senator Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise today to honor the 50th anniversary of an extraordinary institution in Buffalo, New York, Miss Barbara's School of Dance, and to honor its wonderful owner, Barbara D. Glover, affectionately known in the community as Miss Barbara. She joins us here today on the floor of the Senate, along with her brother, Alan, and her sister-in-law, Thea. Miss Barber's School of Dance was started in 1966 in the Humboldt Branch YMCA, and it's the oldest African American owned dance studio in Buffalo. Miss Barber founded her school not just to spread her knowledge of dance, but also to instill character and passion for learning in all her students, seeing potential in everyone, no matter their talent. And believe me, I found this out the hard way. But let me tell you, her knowledge is to dance is second to none. She trained in tap and jazz locally in Buffalo as well as internationally. She immersed herself in African dance through an intense one-month study while in Senegal in the Gambia. Today, she offers classes in tap, jazz, African, gymnastics, and hip-hop. Her wide knowledge has translated into success. Over its 50-year career, the school has been located in seven different buildings across Buffalo, 
Moving each time the school outgrew the ability of the building. But the school's success is not just evident through the number of buildings the school has inhabited. It is clear through the achievements of its students. Miss Barber's careful instruction has provided the lessons and structure needed for her students to go on to careers in areas such as law, business, education, and entertainment. Like any good teacher, Miss Barber takes pride in the accomplishments of all of her students. In fact, I myself am a student of Miss Barbara's. For the past few years, Miss Barber has helped me prepare for a dancing competition in Buffalo among elected leaders. She taught me, you've got to get down to get up. Somehow she put the swing into these shoes and got me up onto that stage. And let me tell you, I hung on for dear life. And quite frankly, she's the reason I made it through the night. By the way, for those of you keeping score, and I know you're all keeping score, we had a perfect score. I couldn't have asked for a better dance partner and a more patient teacher. If she was able to teach me, by the way, to dance, she could teach anyone to dance. Just ask her. But Miss Barbara's teaching isn't confined to the walls of her school. She gives back to our community tenfold outside of her own school. Whether it's through Miss Young gifted and black pageant program, which she created, her, ch her church, the L Lutheran Church of Our Savior, or as an active member of organizations like the NAACP, the Buffalo Niagara Partnership, and the National Association of Dance and Affiliated Artists, among many, many other things that Miss Barbara is involved with, she absolutely does it all. We're so proud to call her a Buffalonian. We're so proud to call her one of our own. And I am truly privileged to call her my friend. So to Miss Barbara's School of Dance, congratulations on your 50th anniversary. And to Miss Barbara Glover, Buffalo and New York State owes you a debt of gratitude for everything you've done to help our young people learn and our community grow in Western New York and across this great state. We congratulate you on this amazing achievement. We are honored to have you in our presence. Mr. President, if you could open up this piece of legislation for co-sponsorship and the honor of the floor of the House to Ms. Barbara Glover. Thank you very much. Senator Kennedy, any individual who can teach and deal with you should be canonized, perhaps, today. <laughs> so.